guys, welcome back to Boots and Bunny Homestead. Today I'm gonna take you outside, give you a quick garden update. And let you see what's going on. Spring is in full bloom around here. And so is all the plants. And I wanted to give you an update on uh, what's in the garden, what's coming up here in these beds, and some new stuff that I've put out for the late spring, summertime. So let's go over here and take a look. I think we'll start in the big garden because that was the most recent one that you guys um had last seen so let's go over here and check this out see what's going on okay so over here in the big garden first of all i wanted to show you i still got my compost tea going there and that's what i have been kind of putting on these plants all right so as we walk in of course first thing you're going to see is the cabbages here these were the ones that was eaten up by the bugs lately um one of the last few videos you guys have seen with any plants in it so i wanted to show you they are looking really good i did have a cabbage moth out here that i have since killed um so a few of them have a few holes i'm gonna watch that and if there's any more showing up we may actually have to cover this with a net beside it we have broccoli so we've got several heads here they have some of various sizes going on so uh, we won't have to harvest them all at once but there's my broccoli it's the darker darker plant here now um, we walked in past this because of course first of all what caught your eye was the cabbage and broccoli all right so the big items you see right there there's one let's see one right here one right here one back there those were the the garlics that i planted back oh goodness um october i think and i ended up only having three survive under all of the snow and ice we got so i've got to rethink the way i'm doing that because i had all of this covered with leaves and with straw uh, or hay i had all of this covered and it was like six to eight inches deep it still wasn't enough so i've got to rethink how i'm doing my garlic because this is the second year in a row that they have frozen and went to mush um so um within the garlic here you will see that we have our onions I want you to see these guys. They look really good. These are the ones I started from seed. And, oh my gosh, we had like, I don't know, 170 something of these things. So they all look really, really good. And that bird is having fun up there. <laughs> but look at the little bitty bulbs right there. They are so cute. Little bitty bulbs right there. And of course, these are at various sizes and stages just because of the way they grew. And that's okay. Um, so walking on over here, you will see we've got kohlrabi. And this big one right here, it's almost done. Uh, we've got probably two to four weeks left on it. And these others are slowly behind it. Um, last year we had 12, this year we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe. I did have a couple that died. Right next to it is radicchio. Now I've never grown it, never eaten it, never had it, but they are really pretty. This is kind of like a mixture between, um, just a green cabbage and a red cabbage. And these are looking really good, guys. Really good. Now, amongst all these plants, you'll see these little spiky things. <laughs> these are mold plants for you new viewers. Those are mold plants. Um, the ones that have the multiple little branches on them right there. And then these right here. These are what's going to produce the seeds for the plants for next year. This does reseed itself. It is an annual plant, but it's also, it's a reseeder. So it reseeds itself every year. 
and um, so it, it's kind of like a perennial it's just a yearly annual so um, next to the radicchio here we have the rest of the onions now you also see within here a couple of radishes <laughs> because I planted this originally with radishes and they didn't come up so I did see a few of the radishes that were poking its head through the ground as I was planting the onions so I left the onions away from them just so they could go ahead and grow and right there you do see one pretty good size that one's probably ready I just haven't been out here in a couple of days um, so these are the rest of the onions and they look good as well we've got to come out here and do a little work on the onions pretty soon and I'll bring you guys along to show you that now over here, this is kind of, it's kind of a bed I haven't worked a whole lot in, but these are supposed to be beets, and then though there's, it's separated by that mold plant right there, it's supposed to be two beds here of beets, and I can't remember what kind. This is one kind, this is one kind, and this bed right here is one kind. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> That's what we got in beets. Um, not all of them germinated because they did go through a cold snap and a snow. Um, and you do see a lot of weeds around the edging. Now this year I have not been as vigilant about weeding because I'm actually using some of them. Now this right here and that back there is wild lettuce. Uh, some of this right here is chickweed. Then we've got some... Um, uh, what's it called? Um, hang on. Hen bent. We've got some hen bit right there. And right beside it is dead nettle. So this is hen bit. And this is dead nettle there. All of this stuff is medicinal. So I'm not totally apt to pulling everything out. Now as long as it's around the edging. That's fine. I have been keeping the center beds fairly clean. Um. Just so it doesn't take over with what I'm trying to actually grow to eat. Um, so, that's the beet bed. And that's the reason why it's kind of weedy. Um, now, back here, I don't exactly know what this and this is. It looks like a garlic. But I didn't plant garlic back here. I don't really know what it is. I'm going to let it come up and just see what it is. Um, I didn't plant onions and I didn't plant garlic. I actually didn't plant anything right here. So I don't know what that is. Um, this right here is another uh, dead nettle. And amongst it, the grass looking stuff. Like right in here. All of this right here. Let me back y'all up a little bit. All of this right here is garlic chives. Um... And they just, they reseed themselves. They, they go up, put the bloom on, the bloom creates the seeds, the seeds drop. And of course, they reseed themselves. So this is just kind of a patch. Now I did sprinkle some of the garlic chives along here uh, last year. Uh, but they kind of didn't come up through here. They just kind of stayed over here. So they like this area. I'm just going to kind of leave them there. It's at the end of this row right here, so they are not hurting anything. Now, I do see, <laughs> this is funny, right there is actually a blueberry plant. I'm sorry, not blueberry, blackberry plant from where we pulled those up because those were actually in this bed over here. And there's actually a blackberry plant there that I'm going to, I don't know if I'm really going to leave it. Or if I am going to try to donate it to a friend or something. But there is one there I let grow last year. And this one seems to want to take off this year. So that is probably going to have to move. Um, because I'm going to have to plant some stuff in here. So let's walk around. Okay, so back over here at the end of this row. I have English peas. Um, these are, um, I think, the sugar daddies. I do have to do a little work because they are getting tall enough to reach the top but or reach the bottom of that cattle panel so they can grow up but I have some that are down here that are tall enough but they're laying over so I've got to come out here and kind of coach these along to try to get them to stand up and attach to this cattle panel 
not all of these came up there was a few here that didn't germinate but the rest of them seemed like they come up me and logan planted two rows and we did them um kind of diagonal from each other i can't remember what i called that last year um they're kind of offset so like one here 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 and you get the idea it's kind of it's staggering um so there's two rows four inches apart and the seeds we put in are four inches apart so every four inches diagonal there is a seed that we planted and everything so far has looks like they've come up now there's a spot right here because there's actually a four by four right here because this used to be a walking path before I turned my beds to put them this way. <laughs> um, so I couldn't plant anything right there because there's a piece of wood right there. Um, but the rest of these, they all seem to have come up. Uh, like I said, these are my garlic chives. This is a bunch of chickweed I've kind of let take over back here. Um, I pull this up to give my chickens and I also use it medicinally. If you are a bounty hunter, member we did a recent video on the chickweed um, so those of you that want to see that you can become a bounty member and get those special videos that i'm doing with certain things like that and then this right here is wild lettuce and i am leaving it because i've got to do um, some medicinal videos and stuff with that this stuff right here is just weeds and i've got to come out here and kind of get some of these out but it's almost tomato planting time so for those of you that have been around for a little bit you know that these two cattle panels right here this one and that one they house my tomatoes during the summertime so the peas are currently on this cattle panel this one is currently open because our sun um it rises over here and comes up and sets over there so the shed here blocks this cattle panel for about six months of the year i have not planted anything here yet but when it comes time to put my tomatoes out in the next two to four weeks i've already got a spot ready for them to go on this cattle panel and then i've got some younger ones that i'm going to succession plant and once the peas get done then i'll be able to pull the peas up and put the tomatoes in or what you can do is go ahead and put your tomato plants out and as the peas are finishing up just cut the pea plant off at the bottom and then instead of pulling them up and disturbing the ground where you have your tomatoes already planted you can just cut those plants down leave the roots in the ground and they will be totally fine as well um, because they're not going to grow once it gets hot they're not going to grow and once you cut them down then the plant is pretty much dead it'll just compost in place and you won't disturb your tomatoes that you have already put in there as a second row. Um, so yes, these will be my two tomatoes. And all of this stuff will be ready and will come out by the time we get ready to do our corn and okra in this bed. And um, then these down here, the onions will have to stay. And these right, right there. The onions will have to stay until about the 4th of July. So anything that I want to plant after July can go in those beds. But those are currently going to be occupied until July. Um, so since we only have 400 square feet, give or take a few feet, of growing space, you have to keep stuff like that in mind as you're setting up your garden and rotating your crops between the springtime and the summertime and even back into the fall time. You kind of have to know when your stuff is going to be ready and what you can put out afterwards. So that's my plan. We will see how close I get for them actually becoming reality. So as we move over here, um, a couple of years, I showed you guys on how to pull out your strawberry plants, how to transplant them, how to um, sell the the babies, the runners, and create other plants with those. So here is my strawberry bed. Now my strawberries and my blackberries were in my vegetable bed and um, I did not like it because they, they're perennials. They take up a lot of valuable space. So I put them in their own bed. This is my strawberry bed and it doesn't get a lot of sun because it's under this tree. 
and that's the tree you guys seen fall in the ice storm part of that fell and part of it's still up there this is still hanging <laughs> it's not even attached but um it is kind of partially shaded underneath the tree here so it's not going to get very hot in the summer and um it does really well for the strawberries and i have actually a lot more strawberries on them this year than i did last year but anywho back here these two rows right here i planted my blackberries in let's go back here and look at them real quick since we're back here these are my two rows of blackberries and i pulled them out this is the back of the garden i pulled them out of here put them in these mineral buckets now <laughs> okay you're like i didn't think blackberries are supposed to be trellised okay blackberries don't have to be trellised okay guys but <laughs> last year i think it was last year maybe been the year before i don't know my years kind of get all wonky jawed um but i'm just going to say last year as a reference we did pole beans back here on this trellis and at the same time we put the blackberries in the pots okay because these pots have been back here they've done pole beans they've done cucumbers they've done a little bit of everything i've kind of swapped everything around over the last few years but my blackberries ended up here and i needed them in pots because once we move we're going to take them with us but i needed them out of my vegetable bed and so that's why they are in pots now well the panel was already here and it kind of helped hold everything up while Steven was cutting the grass. And so that's how the cattle panel trellis kind of got integrated into my blackberry plants. <laughs> but anyways, these are already producing. They're already coming alive, coming out of dormancy. Now there is a lot of wild lettuce back here. I'm kind of leaving them until I can get it all harvested and pulled out and then the the wild lettuce won't be taking from the nutrients that the blackberries are going to need so I've just got to get time to get my butt out here and do it so that's why the blackberries are back there and that's why they have a cattle panel <laughs> don't mind them it's okay back to the strawberries these are doing fabulous I do have a couple of mold plants right here. Excuse me. They kind of showed up on their own. So I guess a squirrel or a bird or something planted them there for me. So I left them. Um, you do see a lot of blooms coming up. Like I said, I do have a lot of strawberry blooms on here. And they look really good. You know, it amazes me about strawberries that in the wintertime they hunker down to the ground and they stay warm being close to the ground like they do they'll flatten out and it's like you just don't see them all the leaves will kind of die off uh, or they'll turn dark green and then in the springtime when they start lightening up and they start growing new leaves and they start blooming they just stand up and they perk up it's just like you know they just they stand tall and proud and in the winter time they hunker down and hibernate and it's so fascinating to watch strawberries how they how they transition through the year and change it is so neat so okay well that's enough over on this side of the yard let's go over to the herbal and kitchen gardens all right this is right here at the back door of the house these are our carrots they are looking really good let's look at one this is actually two yeah. see the orange carrot right there i just covered it back up didn't I? there it is right there yeah all right those are doing good those are actually almost ready i'm gonna have to come out here and harvest some of these because they're getting pretty big and the bottoms are looking really good so right beside it is my Texas hummingbird myth that come back from last year. This is one of the last of the late Nagasaki cabbages. I put out here, all of them died but that one. And actually there's a little bitty baby one underneath there. So they're kind of side by side. Um, those are the lone survivors of the cabbage from the winter time. 
here I have uh, chamomile I started from seed because the chamomile I had here last year died I couldn't get it established enough to stay so I restarted some this year I actually put them out here they have come up themselves I sprinkle the seeds down and they have come up themselves so this is doing good here I have echinacea this is the purple cone flower it has reseeded itself from last year from the roots that were in the ground. The roots last three years, and then you can harvest them to their full potential of maturity. And this is the second year for these plants. Right beside it, kind of got to back up. These things are going wild. This is Ella Campaign. This is the second year plant. I planted this last year. It did not bloom. So this year I should get some blooms from it. But y'all, these leaves on this thing are monstrous. They are really, really big. So it's kind of taken over its own little spot there, which is fine. That's what I wanted these beds for. So the, the echinacea is right here. The chamomile's over there. The mint is there. And then I've kind of got a little spots where I have kind of just been sticking little stuff. Right here at the end, I have some spring carrots that are coming up. So those are looking really good. Right here beside it is my kitchen uh, herbal bed. And we have sage here. And the sage is actually blooming. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But I know that sage does bloom. Um, I just don't know what it does to the leaves because I did not um, have it bloom last year. I kept it cut back. But this year it just kind of blew up on me i didn't have time to actually come out here and harvest any i've got a ton of this stuff so i'm just kind of letting it do its own thing this year right here i have some rosemary that i started because the patch that i had in the corner over there did not survive the winter here i've got something planted i really don't know what i put there because i have been coming out here and just throwing seeds in here <laughs> i don't remember what i planted I guess we're going to find out together what that is. So this right here is my thyme um, from last year. And I didn't know if it was going to survive the winter, um, the snowstorms that we had. So I did go ahead and start another little patch here. Kind of see it right there by itself. Um, I kind of started that just in case this one didn't survive. Um, right here, it looks like we've got some carrots. Those may be carrots, guys. Let's see. You know what? I bet those are carrots. Look at that little leaf right there. Tell me what y'all think. Right, right there. That looks like carrots. I bet those are carrots. That's gonna suck, because I've got to thin those out. <laughs> Anyways, um, I do know that I have a carrot right there that come up. I did plant carrots right here. I'm not just totally oblivious to what I did but I did have carrots planted here that didn't come up so I must have reseeded them this being a dead space right here I threw some mustard curly leaf mustard in and some purple mustard just to give it some color back here and then right here was an empty spot so I threw some kale seeds in there and the kale is kind of coming up on its own um, kind of doing its own thing but that is my kitchen herb bed I tell you guys, these birds are having a field day out here. Okay, so next to my kitchen herb bed, uh, we've got another medicinal bed because I've got two two long beds here, and there's one right there that I have my medicinals in, and then this is my kitchen bed that I have my kitchen herbs, like my cooking herbs and stuff that I do. Okay, so here I threw in some more carrots. Some of them come up, some of them didn't. They were older seeds, so I didn't really expect a whole lot of great germination. So, whatever God gives me is whatever we're going to eat. Right here beside it is Feverfew. I started out last year with about three plants. And they didn't make very much. They did just a little bit. But, um, it's coming back with a vengeance this year. So, that makes me really proud. Right beside it is some more carrots. Right here in this empty spot, again, I had planted some kale, so that is doing fairly well. I only did that like a couple of weeks ago, so they're coming up really well. 
Now this stuff right here is milkweed. Um, it kind of travels and comes up on its own. Like you'll see, you'll see some over here under the carrots. I only planted it over here and it has traveled and it's kind of coming up wherever the heck it wants to. There's one right here. There's one right here and there's a bunch of them right here. So this is another medicinal that I planted last year and it's uh, returning this year. So that's great. Uh, let's see. This right here is white borage. I started from seed. I actually put those seeds out and let them come up and do their own thing instead of starting them inside and transplanting them because every time I've transplanted them, they have died. So I just brought the seeds out here and just kind of let them do their own thing. Here I've got a couple of carrot seeds that come up and then over here is some more kale that I, I planted for them to germinate and funny enough right right there is a Swiss chard that I um, planted in the fall and it, I guess it just never came up so the seed laid dormant until now and it decided to come up on its own. That big monstrosity right there is catnip and it was twice as big yesterday. I actually come out here and had to cut it back. That'll be part of one of the member videos that I'm going to be doing. So stay tuned for that. I've got that video coming soon, uh, probably next week. Um, but I had to come out here and cut it back yesterday because it was covering the borage and my carrots and this part of the bed over here. So <laughs> I had to kind of cut that back and get that under control again. Over here, I have nasturtium planted. I've got these in alphabetical order, okay? Um, nasturtium, oregano, and it's starting to come up. It took it a while, but it's starting to come up. Parsley and some purslane because I cannot find purslane around here. So I started some from seed. So I've got nasturtium, oregano, parsley, and purslane. As long as I keep them in that order, I'll know what they are. <laughs> so here is Emma's bed. She does. She did a bed a couple of years ago as her project because every year I let my kids do a special unique project of whatever they want to do. Hers was doing a um, her own mint bed. So here we've got spearmint. Here is lemon mint. This is bee balm. Um, we usually have pineapple sage here. I usually have to buy that plant. Um, I left it this year thinking maybe it'll come back. It's not looking too good though. Um, this is lemon balm. This is lemon mint. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and then, Lord, I got confused. I'm going to have to go back on a video and look. This is some other mint. <laughs> this is so sad. I can't remember which is which. But I do know this corner right here is lemon mint. I mean, lemon balm. And then there's a lemon mint and some other mint over here. Um, I believe, okay, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to have to go back and look. I think this is lemon bee balm. And that's regular bee balm. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Just break it off and sniff it. <laughs> so that's Emma's bed. And it's still coming alive. Looking great. Okay, so these are my problem beds for you that are on my live um, these are the problem beds that we talk about. These are our center block beds that are on the side of the house over here. There's where we just came from. So they're over here on the side. Now, if you've been watching, you know that we are planting trombancinos this year. These things took like two weeks to get this big. I mean, they were extremely, um, fast growing from seed. So we had to hurry up and get these out of here. But, um, this is the wood chips that we got that we put a video out on. We filled these beds up and then we had to take some back off <laughs> because I had to plant the Trumpencinos. But you will see 
we already have some damage guys these slugs are just relentless didn't whoops we didn't mess they didn't mess with this one too bad and then I've got three over there they kind of ate up that one but the other two they left alone so three out of the six they've been nibbling on well I did a video last year on the Biro it's beer O like sluggo I did beer O <laughs> to get rid of the slugs it worked while they were there but I didn't know if they would actually um, be back this year since we hadn't planted anything out here but that was the whole reason of getting the tromboncinos was because they're supposed to be pest resistant and we wanted to really give them a run for their money because we can't grow squash around here like zucchini yellow squash because they get eat up so bad by the vine borers and the slugs the squash bugs don't bother them but the vine borers and the um the slugs eat them up over here so we got the tromboncinos and as you see the slugs have already gotten to them now i did have some slug and snail um attractant pellets and i put those down and i don't see any more additional damage now you might see there's one little pellets i put those down just kind of sprinkled them around you can't always see them because of the wood chips i put them down yesterday i even put them on the ground and guys look that's that white stuff that shiny stuff right there is the slug residue and it is everywhere so if it works what it's supposed to do it attracts the slugs and the snails yes so you put a barrier around your plant they're attracted to that pellet and then they i don't know if they eat it or if it gets on their skin or what i don't see no slugs out here today <laughs> But I see a lot of evidence that they were. Like it's all shiny around there. You guys can see it right there on the leaves. I mean, it's their their slime is everywhere. So they do attract it. Now, we're gonna have to keep an eye on it to see if they actually work. Now this bed over here I haven't done anything with. It's it's topped off with wood chips. It may just rest this year. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do. But if you've been around very long, I did plant onions here last year. They did not do very well uh, just because I guess the nutrient inside the little squares wasn't enough for them. But I did have two here that overwintered and has survived. This is their second year. I'm leaving them there simply because on the second year is when they produce seeds. So I want to see if I can get my own seeds. But guys, these onions look great. That's the same onions I have over there. It's about the size of a golf ball right now. Now these, um, these little spikes right here, the green onion part, that actually tells you how many rings your onion is going to have. So mine's still growing, but as of right now, they got six, seven rings and it's still going. So those are gonna be some pretty big onions. And this one right here, it's a little bit smaller. Ugh. Gonna need some of these wood chips. Let's see if we can dig it out. It's way down in there. Yep, there it is. Okay, there's the onion right there. Kind of give that a little bit of air. But this one right here has one, two, three, four, five. It has five rings right now. So it's it's a little behind the other one. But I'm going to see what they do. I'm going to leave them here and see if they actually bulb. And if they produce the little flower that's going to be on top. And if they produce seeds. So we'll keep following that up this year. Okay, one thing I have not really told you guys about. I kind of have and kind of haven't. <laughs> if you guys watch our lives, you will know that Simply Jan Homestead. Miss Jan sent me some elderberries, um, elderberry cuttings, and they got lost in the mail for two weeks. All alone, all by themselves. 
So they came in. I Marco Poloed her. Ooh, my hair is getting blown everywhere, ain't it, guys? I Marco Poloed her and was like, oh my God, they finally showed up. She was like, open them. Let me see what they look like. Let me see what they look like. They were beautiful. They had leaves on them. They had little sprouts coming up the side. They were actually really good. Better than they look now. Let me show you what they look like and I'll give you a little tidbit about what happened. Okay, so here are my five little sticks that she sent me. And like I said, these little knobs here, all these little knobs had little green sprouts coming out. I mean, they were four or five inches long. They looked really good. When I took them out of the package, the next day they all died. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna put them back in the package and see if they grow <laughs> anyways so they look bad right now but there is hope guys there is hope look this is one of the sprouts so I've got one growing here I'm not really sure if that's one or not I doubt it I doubt that's actually one it's probably a seed or something it don't look like that I don't know. It don't look like that. Anyways, we're going to throw that down. Um, and I'm going to leave these in here because these will produce roots down in the ground from the little stubs that I buried because there's actually another set underneath the ground. Those will produce the, the roots that are going to grow the plant. They may not come out too much this year. We'll watch them and see what they do. Um, but they will go back dormant and then they'll produce next year. But, yep, there's there's life beyond the grave, people. <laughs> hey, Jan, look. There's two little sprouts <laughs> out of the five sticks you sent me. <laughs> but, if nothing else, if these die, these will actually rot in the ground. They'll fall over, and then I'll know they're dead. <laughs> they won't come back. But, one out of the five ain't bad. I consider that a win. Okay, we're going to walk around front. And let me show you. All right, so this is the front beds. Now, again, if you guys have been following this very long, you know I don't grow typical stuff. Everything that comes in my yard has to have a purpose. And out here, we also do edibles and medicinals. So these big mamas right here are mullen. Oh, there's actually three. There's one here, one here, and then one right there. Um, these three plants are where the mullen tincture comes from on the website. Now, the lemon balm that grows right there, that's where that grows. <laughs> so, this is where the mullen plant comes from on the website that you guys order for the tincture. Now, these are second year plants, so they will actually be doing some fun stuff this year. I'll keep you updated on that, and I'll have new medicine come out because the plant does one thing and what it produces does another so um these will be fun to watch this year now back here i wanted some color up here because i planted some purple mustard and the cold weather got it so i wanted some more color out here so these are actually roses i got on clearance but these also have a purpose <laughs> so we're going to wait and see what i do with those roses I got a purple one and a pink one and a red one and a um like a tropicana sunrise one and then i've got the one that i did the story on uh that me and steven have had for over 20 years um so you can go check out the rose video about that um so those are two roses there i can't remember which colors i put where so we're just going to see what <laughs> what comes up here is actually a mum and what I do every year in the fall after everybody tears down their fall and Thanksgiving decorations I ride up and down the roads and get mums some live some don't and I plant them if they come back then they live if they don't then they won't <laughs> so that's actually one that is coming back from last year that I planted there. This is actually the second year I've had it. Right here is some more catnip. This is a late Nagasaki cabbage. Um, 
it was the only one that survived that I planted right here because if you guys have watched I did the mustard out front cabbage in the middle the rose orac in the back that did not come up this is my lone Nagasaki cabbage but I let it go so I can see what it does so it produces these little pods here that you can actually eat these um, or you can let these mature you can actually put a bag over them like a mesh bag and you see those little pods right there um, sorry right there they have uh, the seeds in them and so once they flower they produce the pods the pods produces the seeds and that's how that reseeds here is another mom that I rescued last year these back here are um, Hysons. I have a purple set and a pink set. These were planted before we moved here. So one side is pink, one side is purple. I thought these things were going to die because we have done put a layer of um, gin trash and then like six inches of wood chips on top of them and they still come up. So kudos to them. Here's a perfect example. I do have a mum planted right there, but it's not one that comes back every year. So I've got to replace it with another one. <laughs> I find me another one this fall and put it there and see if it comes back. Here's some more catnip because these beds were actually mirrored to each other. But as you see, I've got mullen over there and I only have one mullen here. The rest of this died. I don't know if it didn't like the area or if the conditions weren't right for it, but they died and that's okay. I can either plant more or since it's a, a biennial plant, which means it, it produces every two years, other than growing the plant, it does produce. Um, I could do one year over there and one year over here so I can replant one side, like I'll replant that side next year. I can replant this side this year. So that side will produce this year. This side will produce next year when I restart that side. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's a lot, but I got a lot going in my brain here. This is actually yarrow. And I did have it planted on the other side as well. It did not like it over there. It liked it over here. So I'm, I'm kind of letting the plants tell me where they like to be. And we're going to figure this out together. So here is my one lone mullen. And I did have a couple of mums back there, but they kind of got covered up, so I'm not really expecting them to come back. <laughs> but here's two more roses. Um, I believe this one is one of the... I'm not even going to lie. I don't know what it is. I have no clue. Um, we're just going to see. So here's a couple of these mums that I got off the road. I don't think these are going to come back. So I went ahead and broke all the tops off, and I'll just use the dirt for them for something else that I'm planting or whatever. So here's a mom that did come back from last year. I believe this one is purple with that dark purple burgundy. I have some hostas that have come up through here. Um, this is their, here they are. This is their second year being here. So I actually transplanted them last year. So this is be, this will be their first established year. And they are slowly coming through the wood chips. And then these over here is where I've got some of those from. I transplanted some of these hostas over on the other side. Now, these were already here. These were not planted by myself. Um, so, I, that's why there's hostas here. Because you can't really do anything with hostas. You can eat them if you have to. But, I did not plant them here. So, I'm, there's nothing else that really grows in the shade. between Because this is, this is the house and this is the garage. There's nothing really that can grow here. So I just put hostas here just because that's what was here and I'm trying to slowly fill them in so it's two solid walkways of hostas as you enter in between these two buildings um, because this is kind of what they look like from the road here. Well, the road's out yonder. There's mine and Steven's rose. I have a story on that if you want to go back and find that video if I don't link it here. And, of course, as you can tell, we did put wood chips down. The hostas have come through it. And along the edge of the beds is wild lettuce and dandelion. There's also a mum that came back right there from last year. So, I think this is going to be its second year. So, it's well established now. Now, with the... This is wild lettuce. 
and I don't know what this stuff is right here just yet. I've got to, I've got to contact a mentor. But that's what it is, producing those little white flowers. It's not going to focus, and I ain't got two hands. Okay, um, so if anybody knows what that is, let me know. But this is wild lettuce, and it's growing up. There's some dandelions. Um, I'm letting them grow because I actually made the children plant the seeds here, like the little blowy things. I made them come over here and blow them <laughs> last year. If they wanted to blow them, they had to plant them. So they planted a bunch of seeds, and that's why I have so many coming up. Because I do use these for some of my products and for teas and for different things like that. Here's this plant again. It has a round stem, kind of purplish. And then it's got those little flowers there. Little white flowers. But it looks kind of like a carrot top. If anybody knows what that is, let me know. I don't want to pull it up yet until I figure out what it is. My philosophy is God usually... Wow! <laughs> God usually gives you what you need. Um, it used to be said that back in the day um, witch doctors could go walk around the village and by what God had grown in the people's yards that is the medicine that they needed for the trouble that they had now they may not have known the trouble bear with me guys they may not have actually known about the trouble that they actually had but God grew the plants and the medicine that they needed the season before they actually needed it. Okay, so that's why I want to find out what that is. Because right now, you've got your dandelions, your plantains, you've got all that stuff growing in your yard if you don't spray it. Now, the people that buy this house after we move is going to hate my guts because it's full of weeds. But those weeds make my products. Um, but the... The dandelions and the plantains and the wild um, violets and stuff like that that's coming up, they have a purpose. Um, learn. Dandelions are like chickens to a homesteader. Um, it's your gateway drug. <laughs> Literally, it's your gateway drug. Chickens are your gateway animal to homesteading. Dandelions are your gateway into herbal medicine. Right now, those things are blooming. Right now, they are coming... They're coming out of the ground. They're coming out of dormancy. They are at their peak with benefits. Right now is what you need to be, you know, anytime um, your herbals and your weeds start blooming or they start coming out of the ground, that's when they're going to be most full of their benefits. So um, make sure you start learning. If it's something that you want to get into, I do have videos for my members for the bounty hunters. If you guys want to go click the join button below or maybe to the side, not sure what device you're viewing it on where it's at there is a join box you can click on that and you have two options you have your um boot scooters which is 99 cents a month and you guys get behind the scene picks and first announcements for merchandise products anything like that um and special posts and then the bounty hunters get that plus they get uh special promotions and they also get um videos they get extra uh behind the scenes videos that i give out that i don't want to necessarily put out to the public but, <coughs> excuse me but those videos are for my true supporters for my faithful followers and that information that i give to them in those videos are for them i do two a month and i will be continuing to add more now, once we get through the series that I'm doing now, I'm going to do something else special for the Bounty Hunter members for those videos. Stick around. I'm not here to take your money, but if you want that special content, become a member and support us because this is a job for us. Um, and I do it. I have a full-time job. I am a nurse. I do public alterations and sewing. Um... As a second job, I have YouTube as my third job, and I have a website as my fourth job, and then of course I'm mommy all the time. Um, so I have to kind of work those four jobs in with my life. Um, so for 
for you special members for the bounty hunters for you to, to get those videos um, it's $3.99 a month and that's just a special thank you just for you guys that want to um, support us and get back those special videos and that special information because I've told you guys all along I'm not an entertainer I am a educator um, I have information to provide to you and that's what I'm gonna give to you I don't do the day in the life kind of things I don't do stuff like that we may take you along on um, going to float the Buffalo River we may take you along to concerts and stuff like we did this past weekend we may take you along to the river um, that kind of things but those are special events I'm, I'm not the type of person that videos what I do all day long when I have something special that is what I video and that's what I give to you guys and it's more concentrated on one specific area it's more searchable if you go and try to find something it's more searchable like if you want specific carrot information if you want specific potato information if you want specific herbal information that kind of thing is what I provide to you and it's searchable and you can find it and you the information is there for you 24 7 so you can take me along with you or if you're if you're looking for a particular recipe or something like that it is it's all there and it's all searchable by itself not in what I did um, for the day <laughs> if that makes sense that's not me but anyways I wanted to bring you along show you an update real quick on the garden and everything that's coming out oh I do have um, I do have center blocks around the chicken beds right there. Um, if you guys can see that. Let's see. Yeah. I've got, um, yes, I do have a chicken out. I know that. <laughs> She's injured. Um, but we do have herbs planted in those center blocks around the chickens. Because as many of you know, animals are smarter than we are. They will they will eat or ingest or find whatever nutrient they need for whatever problem they have so what i have over there is lemon thyme sage oregano and mint so if they have stomach issues they can eat mint if they need an antibiotic they can eat the oregano they know what to eat so i'll plant the stuff around the chickens so they can just go through the little holes in the fence and they can eat whatever the body tells them to eat um, because they are smarter than us. We know we don't know when to stop eating. They do <laughs> um, And they know what they need we have to go see somebody to find out what we need but anyways, um, those herbs are coming out and they are looking big and beautiful and Those are for the babies over there. They can have all the herbs that they want um, Anyways, I think that is it. Oh forgot the peach trees these are our peach trees that we planted last year as little um, little saplings and they actually may produce a little bit this year I'm not for sure just yet um, but the leaves look great now whenever you are growing trees like this my daddy came over here and gave us a little teaching moment the other day this is your main trunk at the bottom and then you have these limbs right here. You need to take those limbs, the leaves off those limbs on up to at least halfway, if not more. Because these right here are not actually leaves that are going to produce a fruit. These are limbs. You see this one right here is pretty long. This is actually a limb that is coming off of this limb. So you can see this tree could get really full really quick if you leave it all the way at the bottom. There could be limbs laying all over the ground um, eventually once it gets big enough. So you want to take those leaves up at least halfway so you can control the limbs that it produces. Um, like this one right here. This one was a one of these leaves, leaf stalks last year. And so it has now become a limb and it's producing limbs so you've got to be careful and keep it maintained while it's small so really you can keep it under control and so what we've done is we took it up about halfway up those limbs and then we will have to control it and stay on top of it and prune it every year 
and kind of shape it the way we want it. I just hope the people that buy this house next time or you know after whenever we get ready to sell it uh, in the next few years um, maybe they will be established enough for them to be able to prune it and enjoy the fruits of our labor because we may or may not get anything off of these trees with them being so small um, but we're hopefully we're going to establish them for our next homeowners um, and they'll be able to enjoy them as well Okay guys, so now it's starting to kind of sprinkle out here. This wind is like blowing my hair everywhere. But um, it's starting to sprinkle, so I'm gonna get this camera out of the rain. Say goodbye to the girls over there. Say goodbye girls. See you next time. I don't show my chickens very much. Um, they must just show their chickens. <laughs> but anyways, welcome to the springtime garden. It is in full bloom. And since I've got a lot of my normal stuff already in the pantry i'm kind of using this year to experiment a little bit on some of those odd tomatoes and odd like the the trombancinos and the gherkins and you know stuff like that um the cucumelons um the candy cane peppers i want to use this year since i don't have to restock my pantry that i want to explore other fun stuff but anyways i'm gonna let you guys go i'll keep you updated as everything grows like I said, with the membership, if you want to go ahead and join, I've got plenty of those videos coming out with everything you see growing around here and all of the things that we are going to be harvesting from the wild, foraging um, throughout the spring and summer and fall. Because every season, every month has a different uh, plant that either blooms or produces or does what it does. And you've got to capture it when it becomes available. But I will have as many as I can get my hands on throughout the year um just be watching and go um join the membership if you want to learn about um the herbs and the foraging and come along with me to making certain items i will show you how to make certain items products medicines that kind of thing um i will be showing you some of that and i've got other series that's going to be coming out so it's not just not just about herbals. I've got other videos that I'm going to be showing you guys. So stick around, join us, and um, let's learn a lot of stuff together because that's what we're here for. We're here to share information, and we're going to learn on the fly. Not every garden has a not every gardener has a perfect garden every year. There's going to be stuff that everybody has to learn and everybody has to share, and it's going to change from year to year. Um, I can only give you the basic knowledge and information that I have now whether it comes to fruition or not that's up to God not me so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the garden um, stick around let's see what happens and let's learn together and happy gardening guys we'll see you next time bye